This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. As a youth, one of my favorite things to do on a Saturday morning was to catch an episode of Scooby-Doo. What a great cartoon. A bunch of high school kids and their lovable Great Dane who moonlight as detectives, trying to figure out the mystery that has been set before them. The episodes always followed the same formula, as there was some monster that was attempting to scare off a third party so that they could keep their hands on some sort of treasure or money or valuable possession. The gang would then work at capturing the goblin that was in full haunting mode. Once they'd successfully halted the haunting, the ghoul was tied up or handcuffed. One of those kids would then go up to that person and pull off the mask to see who it really was. Because, of course, there are no such things as ghosts. And what a revelation it was. <gasps> Mr. Smithers! <gasps> Mrs. McGillicuddy! Old Man Smitty! Everyone was in awe at who the monster turned out to be, and order was restored to the Scooby-Doo universe as the bad guy was hauled off to jail. Television and cinema love to pull off the identity switch. Just when you think you know who one of the characters are, bam! We are hit square in the face, and we are shocked to find out that that person is really someone else. Who can forget when a small dog named Toto pulled back a curtain to reveal the great and powerful Oz was none other than a man who was trying to mask his own identity. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Or how about when an evil lord of darkness boldly declares to a young lightsaber-wielding hero, Luke, I am your father. What great identity revelations. We didn't see them coming. The story of Jesus trekking to the top of a mountain with three of his beloved disciples, Peter, James, and John, could fall along these lines of revelation. For in this journey to the mountaintop, Jesus is exposed for who he truly is. The group make it to the top, and something absolutely amazing happens. As Jesus' face shines like the sun and his clothes become dazzling white. It's a sight like no other. I'm sure the disciples were in a state of shock. I mean, how can you explain this? What is going on? Is this a good thing that we're witnessing, or maybe is it at the end? They just don't know. They stand in awe and shock and amazement. Jesus is being transfigured right before their very eyes. What is happening, it's not normal whatsoever. Jesus' appearance is changing, and these three disciples are seeing Jesus in an entirely new light. Pun intended. Then we get the big revelation. We hear the booming voice coming from a cloud on high and echoing with authority. The voice says, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. Wow. If the trio ever had their doubts as to who Jesus was, certainly these doubts have been scrubbed at this point. Here God is boldly proclaiming, much like he did at Jesus' baptism, that Jesus is not ordinary. He's extraordinary. He's not just any human being, but he is divine. He is not just some fancy preacher and teacher who's attracting a few followers, but he is the Son of God. Jesus' identity is exposed. The mask it has been taken off. Peter, James, and John realize quickly that what they are seeing in front of them is a pretty big deal. So Jesus has brought these three to the mountaintop. They immediately re regret not bringing their sunglasses along with them, and just as quickly they realize that Jesus is the epitome of everything good, because he is of God. 
There is no reason to doubt or to question the words or actions of Jesus. Everything is laid out. The salvation plan, it's, it's in place. Trust him. Let Jesus get to work. Just listen to the guy already. The Transfiguration is a great story telling us about Jesus and who he truly is. It is a revelation of identity that helps us in our walk of faith because God reiterates to all of us that Jesus is special and extraordinary, that Jesus is the Son of God. But like any good cinematic film or Saturday morning cartoon, I kind of want to take this a little bit further and pull the mask off of the entire Transfiguration story. Because I see it doing even more than just pulling the mask off of Jesus. Let me explain. Just prior to this mountaintop experience, Jesus is having a conversation with his 12 disciples. And in that conversation, things get pretty deep, pretty fast. Jesus tells them what is to come. He says that he must go to Jerusalem. He must undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes. He will be killed. And fourth of all, he will be raised three days later. This is not the kind of talk the disciples want to hear, and Peter is the only one who's bold enough to say something about it. Basically, he says that Jesus is talking nonsense. He's crazy. This is not the way things are going to go down. Jesus, you are the king. You are the Messiah, the chosen one. The itinerary that you laid out, Jesus, you know what? It's weak. There is no strength, no leadership there. Just stop talking, Jesus. You don't know what you're talking about. Jesus knows exactly what's he, what he's talking about. And this is how it's going to go down. Peter is acting like a roadblock in God's salvation plan. So Jesus, he calls him Satan. Savage move. Talk about an identity revelation of shocking proportions. Jesus just called you, Peter, the prince of darkness. We didn't see that coming. Ouch. So in a nutshell, Peter rebu rebukes Jesus, Jesus calls Peter Satan, and everyone's jaw drops to the floor. But let's just take a look at what Jesus does next. He invites Peter, Peter of all people, to join him on the mountain. Peter, the one who misstepped and misspoke, the one who is acting like Satan and throwing up roadblocks to God's salvation plan. By taking Peter to that mountaintop for the great reveal, something that was revered and reserved for the very few, Jesus is telling Peter, you know what? You may be wrong. You may not know what you are talking about, Peter, but guess what? You still are my friend, and I forgive you. I want to be in a relationship with you. I want you to be a part of this special and intimate moment when I commune with the Father in heaven. That is how much you mean to me. Wow, what a revelation. God shows us who Jesus is through bright lights, through white clothes, and through a, a booming voice from the clouds. And here... At the same time, on that mountaintop, Jesus shows us who God is. Loving, caring, forgiving, compassionate, and eager to grant a second chance, and a third, and a fourth. Even to an imperfect fellow like Peter. And if Jesus can forgive a character like Peter, then certainly God can forgive sinners such as us. The mask has been taken off. It is now God who is exposed by the Son of Man. It turns out that this mountaintop experience has more twists and turns than we expected. It is kind of a big deal. Peter, James, and John see Jesus in a new light. 
but how refreshing it is for all of us as we discover how great God's love is for his people. We are included into God's fold, and we too are invited by Jesus to be a part of that mountaintop experience. There is no hiding the fact that God is with us. God is for us, and God will continue to love us from now unto eternity. No matter what our identities might be, or what flaws and failures we might be hiding, God's love for God's people is unconditional and without end, shining brightly and radiating to all who believe. It is a promise that we can see coming from a mile away. Guess what? I'll tune in to hear those words every single time. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? See y'all next week. Later. <laughs>